I recently produced a video showing how you can use the pattern sequencer within Studio One and set it up similar to the sequencer, the step editor within FL Studio. And some people have said that they would like to use the patterns more, but they're not able to pitch shift or change the pitch of their samples like their hi-hats within that editor, uh, as you can do with the piano roll in FL. So I just wanted to show a little workaround that you can use. It's not the best I mean, it's not the most convenient way, but it is a workaround if you are using patterns and you would like to be able to alter the pitch of your samples. So here I've got a impact loaded up. We've got a kit loaded. And so we're gonna take a look at pitching some of these samples by using automation. So I'm gonna close this out, hold down Alt, and then double click at the beginning of uh, bar two to add a pattern. I'm gonna press P to set our loop, loca loop locators up above the forward slash to activate that loop. And then now I'm gonna double click to open up our pattern editor. So let's start with a hat here. So say we would like to, let's add some hats in here. I'll use this quick button to add those in. And if I play this back, okay, that's straightforward. We can hear how that sounds. Now, that parameter automation lane that you just saw, that's not gonna be open by default. So you do need to click on this icon here and then you'll have access to it. And then what we would wanna do is we need to tie the transpose or input it into that parameter automation lane. So you can just simply click once, be sure that your hat is selected click on transpose. That's now populated into our parameter automation display window here. And after I close impact, I can take this hand, click hold and drag that into our parameter automation lane. And now we have transpose that's been added and we can manipulate the uh, pitch of that hat with these controls here. So this is kind of the global pitch. So when we haven't made an adjustment to a particular hat, it's going to default to this global position. So we'll want to have that be zero most times, I'd say. So if you notice the pitch here, we have the circle indicating that there's automation that's tied to it. If I adjust this global control, take note of that transpose dial, you can see that that is being adjusted. So wherever you haven't made changes, it's going to default to this position. So I'm going to leave that at zero, which is going to be the uh, natural pitch that this is at when we load the sample in. So I'll close that back out. We can see that these are all zero. Now, when I click on this first one, they're all going to be highlighted and adjusted, which I kind of don't like this, but it can be useful and we'll see an instance where it is useful. Um, but what you can do is hold alt, they'll all be highlighted and then you can adjust them individually after that. And these adjustments are made, the numbers represent semitones. So if I raise this up to six, we're raising it up by six semitones. If I leave that at minus three, it's gonna be minus three. If I set this at uh, zero, I feel like the resolution could be taken down a little bit on this to make these a bit more uh, easy to adjust because I'm just not able to get that at zero. So anyway, I'm gonna keep going forward. If I pull this up to four. I'm just gonna set these to one. So now when I play this back, we're gonna hear that the hats have been altered in their pitch. And we could come to the repeat. Okay, come back to sample transpose. And if you'd like to, and as this is playing back, you can notice that this is adjusting to reflect our adjustments. If I open up the impact, then you can see that our pitch is being adjusted. Okay, now if you'd like to set these back to the default position, you can right click on the tab for transpose, reset, and then those are gonna be taken back to our global setting here, which should be on zero. 
So I want to try something. If I hold Alt, then they're still going to be adjusted all at once. I was hoping that if I held Alt, then I could adjust uh, just one at a time, but it's still going to, while I'm holding Alt, it's going to adjust them all. So, but you can see that there's a bit of a workaround. It's a little bit clunky, but you can experiment with that. And hopefully that will help you out with creating some pitch changes within your samples. Now, this whole thing where they're all adjusted when you click on the first one can be handy when we work with something, say, let me get rid of these, like an 808. So here we've got an 808. I'm going to set this back to the original pitch. So now when I click this, if we were to make adjustments to each individual bar here, then the transpose is going to adjust every time. And then this is a pretty long 808. So this is going to start moving around and adjust the pitch and it's not going to sound right. So this is one instance where clicking and holding and adjusting all of these is a good thing because we want that pitch to remain the same for as long as that 808 is lasting. So if I add another one here and then click here, let's drop that down to minus one semitone. And now when I play this back, okay, so, and what I was saying is if I hold Alt, you see if we adjust these individually, it's gonna, not sound right and that's because the transpose is actively adjusting dynamically as the 808 is playing back so this is one instance where it's actually kind of nice to have them all move at once when we're making an adjustment to a sample that has a longer playback time all right so i hope this is helpful for some of you who would like to adjust the pitches in your samples it's not the most convenient way like i said you know but uh this is one area that you can look at for getting it done Thanks for watching.